Hello, my name is Hunter Park. And I'm Linda Wynn. We are second year medical students at OSU College of Medicine at the Cherokee Nation. Our research project includes the demographics of individuals refusing cancer treatment and reported pain compared to those in treatment using an analysis of the 2017 to 2020 Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System, otherwise known as BRFIS. More than 1.6 million people are diagnosed with cancer each year. Despite the different treatment options available for cancer, many individuals refuse treatment for various reasons. However, there is little known about the cumulative group of individuals who refuse treatment. Our objective was to assess characteristics and associations among this group of individuals compared to those who received cancer treatment. As previously mentioned, a cross-sectional analysis was performed using the BRFIS data from the years 2017 to 2020. We included respondents who answered yes to the prompt, do you have cancer, and subsequently answered, are you currently receiving cancer treatment? With choices of, I am currently receiving treatment, I refuse treatment, or I am waiting for treatment. The demographic variables we use included sex, education, and race. The sample used included 6,238 individuals, of whom 83% were white, 53% were of female sex, and over half reported attending college or technical school. Our results showed that the individuals with cancer of internal organs had higher rates of cancer treatment refusal at 8.43% compared to 4.41% of breast cancer, 5.94% of skin cancer, and 4.15% of other types. We found that individuals who did not graduate high school were nearly twice as likely to refuse cancer treatment than any other education groups. There was no significant difference in reported cancer-related pain among the cancer refusal group compared to those in treatment. However, those waiting for treatment were less likely to report cancer-related pain. Furthermore, our investigations revealed statistically significant associations among treatment groups and race, cancer type, and educational attainment, the latter of which showed that individuals with less than a high school education were nearly twice as likely to refuse treatment than those with higher levels of education. Given low education is related to low health literacy, the Agency for Healthcare Research and Quality's Health Literacy Universal Precautions Toolkit may help increase patient understanding of their health and provide them with proper support based on their health literacy. In conclusion, our findings show that low educational attainment and being of a minority group were associated with higher rates of cancer treatment refusal. Previous research has shown that these groups are more likely to have low health literacy and focused efforts should be aimed at improving cancer screening and treatment awareness for the well-being of future patients.